Hello everyone, this is Cam again, and in today's video we're going to be going over the mechanical CAD, or really designing the case, for the Graybert mechanical keyboard. In the last video we went over the PCB and deciding on what features we wanted and how to actually design that in KeyCAD, and today it's going to be a little bit easier because we already have talked about what features we want and where they're located on the keyboard, and so really it's focusing on the case. And in particular, the only design decision we're really making here is that it's going to be an acrylic-based case that will be laser cut. And therefore, we're just going to focus on how each of the sheets are designed. So here's the README. You can see kind of the generic layout of each sheet. And a huge amount of the work here is obviously going to be in the switch plate and designing it to work for the, the multiple configurations that we talked about in the previous video. So switching over to FreeCAD, uh, we see the assembly for Graybert. Um, in FreeCAD, we really only have two or three main files. Um, one to represent the PCB, which is exported via the KeyCAD Step Up plugin for FreeCAD. And then the OLED display, which is kind of just a separate part file because it's not a part of the actual keyboard design. It's just its own component. So if we had another like standard part, we, it would be a separate file because we don't want to modify that as a part of the keyboard design. So really, we're going to be doing most of our work here in this Graybert file. And in, key, in FreeCAD, you can have multiple parts per, per assembly and then kind of replicate those, those parts. So orbiting around here, um, I like to use multiple colors to represent each part. It helps me just sort of see it. I'm not doing this for renders. I'm not doing this to make really beautiful CAD drawings. If I wanted to do that, I would do some form of export and get it into Blender and use lighting and make it beautiful. But here, this is really strictly kind of the engineering side. Um, so to break it down, the, the case really is made out of these bottom feet, which are eighth inch sheets. So everything's an eighth inch sheet, and that's just to make it a little bit easier to get procured. The only exception to that would be the, the palm switch plate, which is about a sixteenth of an inch. A little more information on that later. But we have just these three stack up feet that go to our base plate, which is just the bottom sheet. Then we have some spacers, which we can sort of start to hide away. So we have a closed spacer, which has no cutout for the USB. Then we have two USB cutouts. Then we have basically our PCB is going to be underneath that. And the PCB is hovering, right? So the PCB is not physically mounted to any of the case. It's just soldered into each of the switches. And then the switches are mounted onto the switch plate. So let me get rid of our PCB, hide our, our Graybert PCB, and hide our feet. So that's the switch plate there with our USB cutout moving up on the switch plate. Then we just have more um, closed spacers, basically. Then we have our colored top, which is the last sheet that will cut, like have the cutout for the OLED. And then we have a clear acrylic sheet on top which is fully closed, but of course you can see through it so you can see the screen through there. So that's kind of the basic um, layout of the entire build. And like I mentioned earlier, um, a lot of this work is gonna be focused on the switch plate. That's kind of the most difficult thing. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that it's assembled via standoffs and two millimeter screws. So that's like a two millimeter cutout and then if you go up one, that's a three millimeter cutout because the spacer is three millimeters and the actual nut itself or, or screw is, is two millimeters. And then the reason I bring that up is because the switch plate actually has these sort of diagonal cut holes. And that's just to allow if there's some offset in the, the way that the standoffs are on the case, this has a little bit of flex, but it's not going to slide around on you because it's actually fully constrained because the holes just expand out from the center of the switch plate. 
So it should be fully constrained, but allows enough flex so that if there is some warping or tolerances, it can adjust to that. So that's kind of the stack up of the case and of the actual keyboard itself. And to get into the switch plate, you have to know, of course, what your layout is. And in the previous video, we went over our layout. But to convert something from like thinking of it in 1U or 2U switch keys, you have to start to convert that into actual measurements. I'm going to be using imperial inches. So pulling up this data sheet that SparkFun hosts here, I don't really know who authored this data sheet. I would love to know, but it, it's not exactly clear. Um, but we're going to be using that. So if you look at this, uh, it gives you your basic switch plate or switch, you know, dimensions. But what's really important is knowing uh, how thick your switch plate needs to be and then what the cutouts are for the metal frame. In our case, it's going to be palm. So the really key measurements to keep in mind are 0.55 or 0.551. So with that in mind, if we know, if we want to convert uh, our layout from like 1U or 1.25U to inches, we use the FreeCAD kind of spreadsheet or parameters, I named it, where we can have these defined. So right here, I say 1U is actually 0.75 inches. So that would be the key cap included in that. And then HU is half a U, so just divide that by 2. And then UC is basically a cutout unit, which is the 0.55. So then, following with what we did in KeyCAD, where we had each switch was like row zero, column zero, row zero, column one. We have basically the U of the switch. So like escape or tilde is one U and then down one would be tab, which is 1.5 U. And then we convert that into the X, Y coordinates of where that switch would be located. So this allows us to stay within the same kind of definitions that we used in KeyCAD and in Keyboard Layout Editor to convert that into our switch plate. So after defining each key switch location, we can go back to the 3D model, open up the sketch of the cutouts for each of the switches. And this is a pretty big sketch, so modifying it can be pretty slow. Um, most KiCad users would probably not recommend having, you know, a thousand constraints, but it works. So, like I mentioned, once you have a lot of your parameters defined, you can constrain like each rectangle, let's say, to be not just a hard-coded 0.55, but actually your spreadsheet.uc, so that will be the cutout um, of, of that rectangle. And then you can create kind of like a point that's offset to where you want to say x, y is kind of defined. And then you can just kind of replicate a bunch of your rectangles, and then, of course, they're just defined by what you have in your spreadsheet as the width, so like the u, if it's 1.25u, it's just going to be that multiplied times your cutout factor. And then it's it's very organized as to where each key switch is, and you should end up with all of your cutouts. Now, it can get a little bit tricky, as always, with where you have multiple switches potentially going in. So here's like a backspace. We use that example. So it could be one 2U switch or two 1U switches. And so what I like to do is define the smallest the the most number of cutouts so in this case i would draw two cutouts for each switches and then you can kind of think about it and do i want to just join those cutouts is that okay so that i could have a switch in the center and the answer is yeah so you just sort of draw you make these construction lines and then those defined lines and the same thing happens for let's say like the modifiers uh, you can draw them for 
the 1.25U and the 1Us, and then see where you need to, to combine. Same with the shift. This takes a little bit of effort and a little bit of thinking, but I think once you start to draw it out, you start to see where you can make those connections. So once you have all your switches defined, like the cutouts for them, you skip doing your stabilizer cutouts. So you just focus on the location. And then once you have that sketch done, you can move on to the actual stabilizer cutouts. So going back to our spreadsheet or, or our data sheet, there's actually definition for the stabilizers. So they say sort of, okay, these are for your 2Us, your 2.25Us and 2.75Us because they use the same width spacing. And then for the space bar, they use a parameter A. Basically, if you have like a standard 7U space bar or 6.25U space bar, etc., then your separation might change, but at least the cutout is going to be the same. Now we're using non plate mount cutouts. So it's actually going to have to be about this or a little bit bigger. So you see what I, I'm saying when we go back to a sketch. So let's look at this sketch here. So this is going to be the all the stabilizer cutouts. And to simplify, because we're doing a laser cut sheet, I'm just doing big squares because, like I said, they're PCB mounted, not switch plate mounted. So this can be a little bit oversized, and it, it actually helps. So with that defined... Um, all four of these are going to be the same because they use the same stabilizer size. And then the only difference would be your space bar, which we'll just have more dependent here. But the rectangle cutouts and the ends will be the same. So that's pretty much all the cutouts done. And with the multiple configurations, you may have to see where you need to adjust the cutouts. But it should be relatively self-explanatory once you have the data sheet and you follow those dimensions. So then for this build, the only other extra cutouts were really having a cutout for the OLED and the encoder and the USB-C connector. So those are done though there and they can be customized to whatever keyboard you're doing. With the switch plate cutouts done and pretty much the switch plate done, we can look at the entire assembly again here, and I've done a clip view in FreeCAD, so you can see that we have our stack up again. And so we'll have the switches and keycaps up top here, then they'll mount to the switch plate, get attached to the PCB, have a little space for the pins at the bottom, and then we'll have our bottom. And so a couple things to note, I mentioned earlier, we need to make sure we leave a little bit of space between the edge of the PCB and the case so that it's not rubbing and our switch plate can deflect for that nice sound and feel. Um, but then we also need to think about the actual switch plate width uh, thickness. And, and that's really tricky. So if we go back to the data sheet on these MX switches, we see it's defined as 60 thou plus or minus four thou. And when you think about that, you're like, okay, you know, that's about a 16th of an inch plus or minus four thousandths, that's, that's pretty tight. And if you look at most acetal or palm plates, just grabbing McMaster car for an example, we have both Delrin brand name and just generic acetal. If we say one sixteenth, which is um, 0 0.0625, and then their tolerance here is plus or minus nine thou. So if we add nine thou, to that, that's already way out of spec per the MX switch plate instructions. And then if we use some brand name, we've got a 16th minus 2 thou. So that would be 0660. So that would be right on. But it could be up to plus 5 thou, which again is already out of specification. So that that's really tricky and it actually causes us to need to like make special care when you're assembling your switches into your switch plate that's why here we have in the build instructions that when you're pushing in 
the switch, you need to use sort of somewhat like a, a screwdriver to make sure that switch plate does indeed get clipped right into the switch and you hear that clicking sound because it's easy to think that it's in and then it feels a little loose and things aren't quite right. And that's just the nature of using plastics that are gonna have like a higher thickness tolerance just based on how they're made. Whereas if we had like a machined sheet of metal or steel, it might be a lot easier to get that fourth out tolerance. So with our assembly done, and we've got our switch plate in there and we can check all the tolerances between the OLED and the encoder and the interference between the PCB and how our switches get in, we're about ready to get our parts laser cut. So in FreeCAD, you can create a new tech draw page. Make sure that you use a blank template so that you don't get the title block. And then you can place views of just the typically the top view of each component and interlace them however best fit suits your needs. And then you can select the page, do file, export, choose techdrawing.svg. We'll just call it sheet two for this example. And then you can open up that SVG that you got out in a tool like Inkscape. And you've got all your parts. And so of course you can rearrange them like normal, but there's a couple issues with them. Um, the first is that, like let's take these cutouts for example, each line is one line itself and laser cutters don't really know what order to do these lines in but in this case we definitely want it to cut you know across up across down so we need to join these and make them unique paths that are all interconnected so to do that i use an extension by this username on github it's an incredible extension it might not be the best way but it certainly works for me and what you can do is you can select all your elements with control A and then make sure you ungroup them just because the extension doesn't work if they're grouped. So after doing that, you can go in and select all your groups um, or we'll, we'll just use one switch for example here. And you can do extensions, modify path, chain paths, and then we'll join that. And then now we just have one square that's one path with just endpoints at each corner. And this makes the laser cutting operation a lot, a lot smoother and a lot faster and hopefully a lot cheaper as well. So then you can do whatever post-processing you need and get it sent out to your laser cutter. And that about wraps up the video. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed. I hope you learned something. As always, I glanced over a lot of, a lot of the concepts, a lot of things that you need to know in FreeCAD to make this happen. Happy to do more detailed videos in the future, but now you know a little bit more about how Gray Graybert's case and overall mechanical keyboard was designed. Thanks for watching.